Francesco Mbele, CEO of Fabrisonic. Panasonic was a, sort of a way for me to express myself in multiple mediums without it explicitly being Francesco, Franadilla. Um It's sort of a way for me to just branch out, especially into like physical clothing. Um, it's always something that I wanted to do, but I think expressing it in this way is like really... I enjoy it a lot because I think of it as sort of the workwear <laughs> of like the, cons the creative consultancy brand Panasonic. I think of it as like um, when Steve Jobs went to Izzy Miyake, well, went to Sony, sorry, and he Izzy Miyake had made the, 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 the vests for Sony and that's what I sort of essentially want the Panasonic label to sort of be beyond just clothing and um, an idea just so a concept that presides through South Africa and beyond the world mm, I think I was just always in the scene and when I was uh, when I was doing model work uh, I never really wanted to even call myself model especially but when I was on set and just around all these different creative individuals I was always observing checking what they were doing like how do I connect how do I get inside and over time I guess I managed to be inside and uh, I think what's really amazing about photography is that it's not a difficult medium to get started in. I think how you differentiate yourself from another sort of photographer is just your eye. And if you have that eye, like it translates not only to photography, but it translates into styling, it translate in, translates into the type of car that you drive, it translates into like what furniture you want, I think that's sort of what the foundation is for setting yourself. I think um, there, it's always been a different force which has been pushing me over the years. I think it changes a lot of the time. Sometimes it's like, I just want to get like food on the table for the family, you know, like I really want to support when I can, but then other times it's more like, I don't know how you say, material things, like I really want to buy them sneakers, I really want to buy that article of clothing, I really want to buy that Nintendo Switch, you know, and that's okay too, but I think it, what, what happens is the difference between those things is how do you feel when you actually get when you achieve what you were looking for and what I realized is when I got the material things I didn't really feel as fulfilled as I thought I would feel so I tried to really find other motivations and I found out that what really makes me happy is being able to see my parents look at my work my friends see my see my output and be inspired and feel something. I always wanted to push towards uh, print media. I think um, the fallacy of like Instagram really loses its appeal after you've been on it for a while because it's just a digital sort of situation. But when you're able to actually feel your work and really just brush your finger along the page and be like, this is something that I created and it's gonna really just be here for a, lo a long, long time. Uh, looking back at my father's old like interview mag magazines and the vintage uh, GQs, and that's where I wanted to be. I wanted to a kid like 30 years in the future to be like, that's so crazy, this is so inspiring. Because I don't know with Instagram in 30 years in the future 
will our work will sort of be as concrete as it is as we imagine it to be but pushing towards print media something that I dreamed of and I'm grateful that it's there. I think it's just like don't stop don't let people tell you what you can't do and what you can do but the previous generation had so many gatekeepers telling us like damn this is this is what you should stick to like these these people that we think hold the keys to access to a certain art form but what, what you realize over time is like fuck it dude like why can't why shouldn't i be able to do that you know and as as you realize as you go on you realize you don't even need a lot of resources to really create amazing pieces of art you know like i think really when it comes down to it if you, if you have that drive you'll be able to create whatever you need in terms of where you need to be in that moment where you need to be in that moment is relative to your resources and over time the the, the money and all that sort of funding will come but work with what you have at the moment and don't let anyone tell you like you can't do that shit like fuck a gatekeeper man uh that wasn't something that i meant to get into initially uh, djing as well i was just um, something that i always wanted to do i think about the skeptic line um from blood orange high street I was in the club doing the two-step, wishing it was me on the decks. And I really wanted to be on the decks, you know, like I really wanted to be playing my sound. I saw my friends that were doing it and I was like, fuck, I want to be on those, on that, on that machinery. And luckily I had homies that were hosting events. And I'm not going to lie, I lied. I lied to people. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> the, first, the first event I ever played at. Um, I told the promoter that, nah, I played on CBJs before, I played on these before, but like I'd never actually played on CBJs before. It was my first time. And, um. Premix boys? No, no premix. No premix. Fully like number, 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 number. Thankfully, I did have um, DJ friends. So I did get the record box situation with the BPMs. Um, but it was a cool set, I'm not gonna lie. And that was like my first DJ set. I did have, like, I, previous to that, I'd never played on CDJs, but I just observed my homies playing and see what they're doing. And from there, like, doing these D, doing these events, I, Stiff Pup, like, they hit me up and they were like, yo, um, can you handle the, the marketing uh, for this new sort of, thing that we want to host in Joburg and I was like that's that's cool let's let's fucking do it and it was around election time so our whole theme was like the elections and shit and I was like okay I fucking was like crazy let's do this let's, let's not stop and since then like every party has just been like conceptual situation and it's just like, I guess, another means for us to express ourselves. And yeah, since then, Lenzo has joined the team and it's it's been so much, it's been just a great time. Like from, in terms of the pandemic, that's the one thing I miss the most. That was, that was a, a thing of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this work like I'm gonna do this um, but it's also about not being blinded by your goal I remember there was a time when I did want to shoot for Tebe Magugu and I did want to do all this all these other things but it was I forgot about it at that at, at like points like at, at a certain point and I started to focus on just really honing on my craft so it was never a thing of i want to shoot for tv um when it was the right time for it to happen it happened uh thankfully i also forged the right connections uh 
I had actually I met Tebe for the first time um, backstage when I was modeling for Wonderland Photos collection. So at that point, we'd already sort of started a connection, and I think never force it. It'll happen naturally if it ha if it needs to happen. It will happen. That's such an underrated sort of situation. I think in terms of a creator's mental sort of state and actually putting like your mental space, thinking about it physically, I think that goes a long way. Um, when you when you have a clouded and and jaded mental uh, health sort of if you have a clouded mental if you have a clouded and jaded mental health sort of situation um, think about it as like your room like your room its windows are tinted there's cardboard boxes your laundry is on the floor with spaghetti like that's how your mental space is and it can be even worse like think about that hot chocolate that you left underneath your bed that you forgot about now there's mold like it's easy to sort of forget how important it is to sort of keep that space clear and sort of hygienic in a way i think being able to take time to be like this is what i really like doing like it's really i love creating but also i really like what's it scuba diving or i really like playing squash that's another way for you to sort of express yourself and that will aid in being able for you to clear your space. I think it's also easy to get caught up in things that you really don't want to do. Um, partying all night, like getting involved with people that you never wanted to sort of get, get involved with. That also just clouds your space, dude. Being able to be like, this is where I want to be. These are the people I want to be with that really helps you in the long run in your emotional health in your creative health yeah <laughs> i say no a lot of the time that's something that i've learned i have to, you have to really say no um there comes a time and a place where you really you, ca you can't support yourself like this and you're leaving the house with two go-go bags full and you're leaving with and you're coming back with nothing with, with the tag and the repost I don't know you really have to sort of think about where you are where your space is and how can you how are you able to make some money out of what you're doing really it it's about entrepreneurship and I know we all learned in grade 7 how important entrepreneurship is, but I feel like it really left our mind. And I think also entrepreneurship isn't about copying whatever anyone's, like the next person's doing. Like, it's dope that you want to run a thrift page, but like, how can you make it unique? How can you, you want to make a jewelry page? What makes you special? What makes, why should I buy your jewelry instead of the next person? Being able to sort of make your own space make your definitive lane that will make people want to invest in you um, but just know when to say no um, it actually you don't need that repost and that tag but you do need that cash in your bank account that's tricky um Something that you, I think I learned is pricing is relative to who you're pricing. If you're pricing your homie who is an upcoming rapper and you, he stays in Alex, you know he ain't bowling like that, but he really about it. Like, think about that price. But then if you're pricing like a alcohol brand which has global funding, think about how you're pricing them. I think... Like I said, it's very, it's very relative to the situation. Um, think about who, who you're dealing with and why they need your services and 
all that all that cul- culminates into the price I think I really I really think actually I don't think just I really think I really think that <laughs> the pricing guide is not definitive and you have to define it yourself like I said about the relativeness it does come down to the situation but what are you trying to do what are you trying to build with with this brand if you're really trying to build a long-term relationship there are going to be sacrifices along the way um, for you to get the big cheese sometimes you have to nibble on the small cheese and being a fan a lot of the time can make us like hella excited and shit but it's important that you don't show how excited you are and you treat them you treat them how a business would treat a customer you know so professionalism getting that bag in the right relative sort of situation and yeah thinking about what you're trying to grow I would like for them to take from it essentially would be that in this country you can really if you put your mind to it you can do it and if it's meant for you I know I think we are sold a lot of pipe dreams and we we have a lot of there's a lot of things which are fashionable to do and we don't actually have a lot of passion in them I I would like a kid to see my shit and be like I actually have I actually have a passion for what I'm doing and I want to pursue it regardless of the sort of hurdles that we have in the country um, it needs to be accessible it needs to be equitable it needs to be something where if you if you have a low data plan you can still get it it needs to be something that if you don't even have a, a laptop you can still use it it needs to be something which some kid in Alex can see it and really feel like that's what I want to do like this is where my heart this is what my heart yearns for it's about it's a lot about paying homage I think like I don't know what's up with these new rappers these new rappers hate paying homage I saw I love Young Thug I really love Young Thug but he was saying like I don't know Andre like what I don't know that was the wildest thing I've ever seen and I see that in a lot of sort of um, creative avenues but it's important to know where you're coming from and people who were before you Um, research is really important Um, being on Instagram is research you know but what are you consuming what are you really consuming funneling that consumption into something which is worthwhile can go a long way like Samuel Toro on Instagram I always learn something new when he posts something reading those captions Uh, when Lenzo posts something when I read that caption I feel light you know I feel I really feel like a story was being told and that's sort of the sort of research consumption that you can do Um, having a mentor isn't essential it really isn't essential you don't need an OG like regardless of what people say like you don't need an OG Um, but it's really like I said observation being able to observe someone be like that's how they're moving so not only taking the good things that they do but taking the bad things that they do as well and being like that's something that I wouldn't do that's something that I learned from some of the older people in my generation like I see them 
and I see a lot of the amazing things in how they create art, but then I also see the way that they behave in, like, beyond the creative scene, and I'm like, you can't do that shit. So, having, having a mentor isn't essential, but having someone that you observe and look to, and you can learn from in not not a sort of direct learning but learning from your own take i think that really that's something that helped me grow i've been I, it's crazy a few people asked me that in the last couple of weeks and i want to get back into it i do um i think i had a passion a little bit more passion when I was younger <laughs> younger like three years ago <laughs> I had a bit more passion when I was a few years ago and I still have it like I'm still very invested in music but I think I want to sort of take it from a different angle I want to um, be able to help develop and work on my friends who are making music shout out to star player and Yoza, like Shanti like I really want to shout out to Rams. Um, I want to be able to work with them and see how I can maybe directly and indirectly have my influence on their work.